we're here at Linedale Road um, in the border of Maryhill and Somerston, right beside Somerston train station. Um, there used to be three mini multi-storey high flats here. Uh, the site has been vacant for about 10 years now and this is the location we're looking at for Clack & Co housing which is our planned co-housing development which will feature 22 houses and a shared house um, so a chance for people to come together and uh, live in a, an intended community and share the social and economic and environmental benefits of living together. Hi, I'm Frank. I'm the treasurer at Clack & Co housing. Um, really exciting project, really glad to be involved in it. It's been a project which has really pulled together a lot of threads in my own life um, around working together collectively around addressing practically the environmental crisis ahead of us um, through setting up this housing development plan to he have here in northwest of Glasgow. Uh, so it'll come off, it'll happen and it'll show the way for a number of other groups we hope in Scotland to copy us and, and learn from us and copy us and build their own developments elsewhere in the country. My name is Christine Venard um, and I live in Maryhill in Glasgow. Um, I've been a, a member of Clacken Co-House Development Group uh, for two and a half years now. When I heard about um, Clacken, it coincided with a time in my life when I was becoming increasingly concerned about uh, the impact that we were all having in the environment and just felt quite strongly that I needed to change how I was living and how I shopped um, to try and make a bit of a difference. So when I heard about co-housing, I got quite excited about that because I was kind of feeling that if I was going to do something on my own, um, I wondered how, how, how I would manage that. But to, to be part of a community, a group of people who want to live a lifestyle that is sustainable, um, that's, that's having a, a positive impact on, on, on the earth, um, just seemed so much more possible. I've also always been interested in community um, and living in a co-housing community where I know there's going to be challenges, but I feel that I've got a lot to learn and I'm going to get a lot out of that. Um, it's just really exciting. Um, I'm confident this is going to happen, that we are going to build a co-housing community and I really, really feel strongly that we're really going to show the way to other people in Scotland about what we can do. Because in the time about whether we decide um, to tackle climate change is, is, is over. We need to do something and we need to do it now. And doing it together with folk and community just is, well, it's great. So my name is Martin Grail and I'm the Chair and Founder of Clark & Co Housing. Some other folk from the group are here. This is Christine, Hi. Jamie and Joe are here, Tom, Frank's up the back there. And we've got a couple of members missing because they're not around. Um, so basically I'm just going to go through and explain a bit about what co-housing is, the, kind of, the, the plans that we've got to do it, and then talk a bit about the site, and then we'll maybe talk a bit about the history of the group as well. Um, maybe if I start with that. So, this idea came from about from me and my friend Grace talking about eight years ago about getting a big house where a bunch of people could live together and um, get the benefits of uh, living in the community, live with other people and those kind of social benefits and stuff like that. We looked at various options, we looked at issues, primary schools, um, former nursery schools, uh, we looked at one jail um, and various other buildings but it proved to be too expensive to convert an old building because if you convert an old building it's subject to VAT so it's very expensive and very challenging to convert old buildings to new usage. It gets done because it's, it's done now with student accommodation, there's old office blocks being converted to student accommodation so it gets done but it needs a lot of money to do it. So then we kind of hit on the idea of doing building from scratch and I was always against that idea because I thought building something from scratch was really expensive but then we found this place in Leeds who were doing it already so that kind of started to become an inspiration for it so that's kind of where the idea for what we are doing comes from this is by this place in Leeds. We'll get to that bit later on. Um, but maybe if you talk a bit about what co-housing is. So co-housing in the format that we are talking about there's um, in our model we've got about 22 households and a shared house. So everyone has their own, every household has their own front door, living room, bedroom, bathroom and kitchen. So it's all self-contained households, but there's also a shared house where People come together to spend time, to eat together maybe once a week. There'll be things like a library, a TV room, workshop, um, shared laundry. So for 22 households, you only really need five washing machines. 
So therefore, you can save money and space by having the shared laundry facilities. We also have guest bedrooms in the shared house, so the idea is that in the co-housing, the individual households will probably be slightly smaller than, than, than average, but if you have guests come and stay, they can stay in the guest bedrooms in the shared house. So the idea of co-housing is it's all developed, managed and built by the people who are going to live there. So through the process, you identify what your own needs are, what you want from the housing. And also you bond and form a community with the people who you are doing this with. So that's what we're about at the moment. So moving on, here's an example of co-housing. This is roughly what it looks like. So you can see there, uh, around the edge, there's the houses themselves. There, there's a common house in the middle. This one's got a community heat project. You may or may not want to do that. Shared space in the middle, allotments, common house with solar energy, um, there's car parking inside there. So we figure for 22 households, you may go only 5 to 10 parking spaces up and share the cars between the community. We've made an approach to the Coal Wheels Car Club to see if we could get a couple of um, car club cars at the site. And therefore, you're completely subcontracting all the ownership of vehicles to them and you only use what you need. Uh, so why do it? Um, finance is one reason. So the housing market in the UK is basically broken. You either have to struggle to find the money for a deposit for a mortgage and then pay that mortgage, or you're at the mercy of the private rented sector, where you're entirely dependent on the kindness of your own landlord, which can vary hugely. Um, or you're trying to get social housing, and social housing is very limited supply. Um, so that's another issue with that. Uh, Housing market's totally overheated. The value of houses has, bears no release whatsoever to the um, average wages in the economy. Housing is become an asset that people make money from, rather than being a human right for somewhere to live. Um, so it's unavoidable for lots of people. And there's limited opportunities for shared ownership. Lots of the housing associations will now release maybe 10, 20 houses a year for shared ownership to help people kind of try and get them on the ladder as the saying goes. But again, that's there's no competition for that. Um, the financial model we're looking at is called mutual home ownership, um, which is neither buying nor renting, we'll get to that a bit later. So another thing to do is the environment, so it's in, in a co-housing development if you've got the environment and um, green living as part of the plans from the very start, then you can build in lots of <coughs> energy saving um, mechanisms aspects to it right from the very start. So placing leads is using straw rail construction and passive heat ventilation, their bills are 200 quid a year for energy, which is totally fantastic and it's extremely uh, insulated, it's very quiet inside, it's low maintenance and relatively cheap. So the place down there is made it here be energy efficiency. So that's kind of one of the aspirations we have is to make it as energy efficient as possible right from the very start and build into the design of the project. Um, again, for the environment, you can have minimal cars, you have bike sheds, um, the site here is very close to public transport, it's only 11 minutes to Queen Street Station from Somerset train station, so this site has its own train station, which is just awesome. Um, again, things that like recycling waste and water and stuff like that, so you build all that and you start and the way that people live their lives, and you build that in to make it as very friendly as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Social reasons, so the community can support each other, um, families can pull childcare, you only need one of everything, I mean there's a thing in Governor Hill at the moment, a tool library I believe, where they are um, having one drill, one hammer, etc, one sander. So you can have the same uh, co-housing development, because you only need one of everything, you don't need every single house to have everything that's required. Uh, interaction with social events, eat a meal together once a week, social events of different types. Um, there's also things like um, aspects around when people get a bit older, they would be able to live in a cohesion community for longer than they would be able to live at home alone in a um, single working flat the community can look after. The community doesn't provide care for people as such, but it can facilitate people living independently in the community for much longer than they could if they were in a flat isolated on their own. <coughs> so the main inspiration for us has been this place in Leeds called Lilac. Lilac stands for Low Impact Living Affordable Community and I'm glad that's why I'm doing something I remember it. 
They've got 20 households in one shared house, they use straw bale construction, they've got a lot on the site. The site is a former primary school in Leeds, which is kind of surrounded by a pink fence. Um, they were six or seven years in development, they started from absolute scratch, looking initially at an eco village and then a co housing community. So we are basically copying them. Um, and they're up and running and they've been living there for four or five years. Is that? Um, so uh, they're doing already, so we figure if they can do it, we can do it. Um, lots of us have visited there, they have open days twice a year, three times a year. Um, if you're interested in co housing as well, what visit there, it's very friendly, very welcoming, they'll be extremely um, helpful to us. So this is Lilac here, I don't know if you quickly see that, but this is it there. So it basically takes a one city block. You see that there? This is the housing development. They've got one, two, three, four, five housing blocks and the shared house is there. This is the allotments. Whoops, you yeah, actually so can see this there. Yeah. Uh, the allotments are there. This is kind of green space. This is five car park spaces there, five car parking spaces there. Um, so this is the same visit that we did down there. So very green. There's no cars going through the middle of the site. The cars are kept away from it, so it's very safe for kids in the middle and for everyone else to walk around. This is from the allotments. This is the shared house that you can see through there. Allotments again. In the middle of the site they've got a sun and urban drain system with a pool, so they've got a detonator area above that for seating. Um, we figured we maybe get something similar to similar Lindale Road, maybe with a roof to protect us from the Scottish <laughs> weather. Uh, as the laundry, so they five, this is just five of the washing machines that they brought with them. And as they get, come to the end of their life, their life cycle, they will get replaced with kind of industrial machines. We can just use that as their laundry facilities. There's their menu for a shared meal. Uh, all vegan to be completely inclusive. And that also covers kosher, halal, and other diets. As me and Grace, they'd set us to dig when we went down there, they had no mercy. They just made us sweat, but that's okay, that's good. You sweaty, gosh. I know, it's the first time for everything, right? First time for everything. So, uh, we still home ownership. This is the model that Lyman used. Uh, this is quite complicated. So, nobody actually owns any of the houses at Lyman. Um, the cooperative or the organisation owns the land and the houses. Um, people pay a 10% deposit towards the cost, and then they pay off the remaining cost of their household and the shared facilities at the rate of 35% of their net. Income. So everyone pays the same proportion of their income towards paying off their share. Uh, and the way that works out is higher earners would pay off more quickly, lower earners pay off over a longer period of time. This makes it very um, equal and accessible, so therefore people in different income levels can live in the same place and still have the same will say how things go, and it's just a slightly different time scale for how they pay off. Once your full share is paid off, you then revert to pay 10% of your net income towards maintenance and management of the site. So this is similar to something like your factors fees, for instance, if you lived in a close, which would cover your insurance and stuff like that. So once everything's paid that off, they revert to pay 10% of your maintenance. Um, no one owns a home, you get a long-term lease. Um, and if you decide to leave, you get your money back some of it at least. So therefore it's not like renting because if you rent your money just goes to your landlord. And it's not like owning a home where you would expect to make a profit on it. So there's no profit to be made in this scheme, but you do get your money back if you decide to do the project. But obviously we hope you won't leave the project, but we will stay and be part of it and make it work for it. There's a bit more on that. So if someone leaves they get their money back, somebody else comes in and they start again from scratch to make up that slice of the funding, so we need a cushion of, of funding basically to be able to refund people if they decide to make the project, but people need to leave with three months notice we think we're probably required, roughly speaking. And again, yeah, that's just a reality point. High earners will pay off the next day more quickly than low earners, so, so it's mixed incomes. Um, some people may become a project with 100% of the money in place already, so that's fine, the project can accommodate that, we probably need that to get it going, so some of our current members are in that position. Um, Again, that just gives us uh, a cushion of money to be able to make the work and it also gives comfort to the mortgage lenders. Um, so that would be someone like Kay Bushback or these other ones. Um, a bit of the sociocracy, some of the 
it's one of the techniques we're using for this is sociocracy, it's a um, consensus based decision making <laughs> democratic process. <laughs> uh, Frank and Tristan was good on a sociocracy training weekend, so they're the, the current experts. If I make any mistakes, <laughs> just jump in. Yeah, so basically, it's a different way of, of making decisions and arriving at um, consensus amongst the group. So it's not a simple um, like vote for stuff at a meeting, it's going round the room and making sure everyone understands that everyone's held and everyone has buy-in to the decisions that are made. So it emphasises discussion, it's essentially a cooperation, reasoning, listening to objections. Um, so we're using this at the moment because we think this is a really good way to proceed. Because if we're um, having heated debates at this point, then we're certainly going to avoid heated debates once we're all living together. So it's just a really nice way to acknowledge that conflict is inevitable and this is a good way to deal with it and to proceed with that. Um, we're still feeling away with it, using sociology as a tool, but it's, we can develop it as we go on and, and we all become more used to using it and then it just kind of becomes second nature. Um, something to do with like hands like this or thumbs up or whatever to indicate a set of meetings and things like that, so you see that in some other groups. Uh, Non-valid communication is another um, area we're looking at. We have got a quote for some non-violent communication training which we're hoping to um, basically take up sometime in the next year or so. So this is a way of um, interacting with people where you try and avoid confrontation and violence. So stuff that's up there, observe situations without judgment, identify your own feelings, empathising. So we're trying to adopt these techniques moving forward in order to promote harmony within the group right from the very, very start as much as possible. Previously, we were looking at a site over at Kalina Street, just up behind Mary Hill Locks, which we were discussing with the Casual City Council about. Um, there were issues with the land ownership there, so we had to um, basically uh, abandon our plans for that site due to unforeseen legal hurdles. Um, and it was a real disappointment to us because we put in an awful lot of work at that point. Based on the work we've seen today, it was all what we've done for, for that site. But then, through further discussion with the council, they let us know about a site over here on Lindale Road, 
So it's that side there. So this, this is one, two, three. There used to be three mini multis here, like the ones you see outside. So the side is roughly that we're looking at from there to oh, hold on. there to there to there to there. And we'll see when we go up. Um, we've been working with a woman called Angela Doran, who is the um, self build coordinator for Glasgow City Council. So she leads all their self build plans, and efforts, and programs. Um, over at Bentaskin Street, just below Mary Hill Walks, they've got the first six self build plots that the council has released and developed and they have I've just seen it there now, there's now a road in and plots are all staked out, they've all been sold and people are kind of developing those. So on the back of that success, you know, it's taken quite a while, uh, we are hopefully going to be the first collective self-built project in Glasgow that the council are very keen to work with us. So maybe Angela Doran was the time, so maybe the past from the head of um, housing and, and development and stuff like that. So they're keen for us to um, basically take our plans and carry them out here in the Orangedale Road site. We hope there is a master plan for the entire area which the council is working on. So there's not just a site, there's a site up the hill here, there's a site above Lindale Road just there, which we're seeing we go over, and there's maybe some bits of land here which they want to get developed. So there is a master plan for the whole area, and we are kind of part of that at the moment. <coughs> Um, <laughs> so we need to work with the council and just to carry it through and provide a credible proposal for that site uh, in order to be um, basically part of that plan. <coughs> now, dealing with the council, anything and everything can change at any time, so um, we need to basically proceed in good faith on the understanding that uh, they will be good to the world and um, work with us to try and create this housing project on this site ideally. Uh, we think it's really good. We think it's ideal once you go, go and see where the site is. Mm -hmm. so just to explain a bit about our, our own history with this site, um, before, in around autumn 2018, we were awarded five days of development time <coughs> through a programme called the Right to Build Task Force, which is a UK government initiative to encourage self-build to increase the housing supply across the whole of the UK. Um, so this recognised that housing developers and housing associations aren't able to create enough housing supply to meet demand and the right to build task forces encouraging people to self-build. So through involvement in that programme we got five days of development time which we did with a company called Assemble Architects so we had a um, design kind of a layered workshop with one of their architects, a woman called Kiko. And then we had a finance kind of a wrangling day with a guy called David Hill. And then based on that, we've now got a feasibility study um, based on the site. And so we've got addictive outlines of how it might look. We've got addictive costings. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. And we're just really now looking to develop those plans and take those plans forward. So if you're interested, you can have a sign up at the back here. There's a sheet to sign in, which you can hit us up here. And we can add it to the uh, friends of the clacking list. I mean, at the moment we are looking for people who are interested to get involved with the group to increase our capacity because there's lots and lots of work to be done. Um, one of our members can't be here at the moment, and one of the members, my mom, is away for a few months, so we're feeling slightly depleted in terms of our capacity. So at the moment we're looking for people to, if they're interested, to be involved um, and potentially become members of the group. Mm -hmm. I'm the person who kind of takes the lead in membership. Um, so, if people were interested um, in just learning more about what we're doing and, and how we can kind of operate as a group and that kind of stuff, well, oh, uh, speak to me um, and it would be great then, initially what usually happens is people meet up for coffee and um, talk about it a wee bit more. Um, there are things, Martin has mentioned um, permaculture which is something that we're, we're, we're very interested in doing and we're very interested in integrating that um, to the design of our building. Um, and to how we then proceed to grow things and to live our lives. I mean, I um, I get involved in clacking at a time when I was becoming more aware of the destruction to the environment, the modern life, um, and felt a bit isolated in terms of how I was going to make changes to my own life and, and, and how I did things on a day-to-day -day basis. And that was part of what's motivated me um, to be part of this group. We're looking to build our, our, our co-housing community using materials that are as sustainable as we can find. I don't know if people are um, aware of uh, an, 
expression, um, passive housing. So we would like to think that we could build our houses to as near passive standards as we, we can. Um, so I wanted to mention that because I think it's in it. we talk about that quite a bit when we are looking ahead and planning. But if people are interested, speak to me, um, meet up, can tell you a little bit more about what we do, um, and then we can we can move forward for then on.